Have you ever seen this? This is a copper tube and this is a powerful neodymium magnet. If I drop the magnet through the tube, it takes a long time to get to the bottom. What's happening here is as the magnet falls through the tube, an electrical current is being generated and that creates an opposing magnetic field. That slows the rate of the magnet. This is called Lenz's Law and I'm no physicist, but I believe this is how almost all electricity is generated. If you haven't tried this yourself, you really should. It's very interesting. It's really bizarre watching this thing just float down to the bottom. This works really well with copper because copper has an extremely low resistance, but the metal that has an even lower resistance is silver, and I happen to have quite a bit left over from previous projects. One of my viewers suggested that I use some of this silver to make a silver tube and see how well it slows down a magnet. I thought this was a really great idea, so in today's video, I'll be casting a thick silver tube and copper tube, and we're going to experiment to see which one works better. Unfortunately, the silver that I have is not pure. It's sterling, which is 92.5% silver and 7.5% copper. I have no idea if this will matter, but we're going to find out. A tube is a fairly easy object to cast, and there are a bunch of different ways I could do it, but I figured that my usual lost PLA and ceramic shell method is the best way to go. First, I 3D printed some tubes in a plastic called PLA. Now I can start dipping the models into this liquid ceramic material called suspended slurry to start creating a mold. Over about a week, I built up a thick shell by dipping the models into the slurry about eight times. In between each layer except for the first, I coated the wet slurry with fused silica sand. This helps build up a thicker shell and it also adds some strength. With the shells nice and dry, now I can place them inside my kiln and start to burn out the plastic. Oddly, at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, one of the shells cracked really badly, but the other one was totally fine. I have no idea why this happened, but I had to fix the crack, so I let it cool down for a little bit and then I patched it with some slurry and some fiberglass cloth. I was able to get the shell fixed and back into the kiln in about 45 minutes, which is pretty cool. Now all I can do is hope that the repair holds and bring up the temperature to the melting point of the PLA and let it flow out of the shells. While that was heating up, I started to prepare some copper to melt. Once most of the PLA had flowed out of the shells, I removed it and cranked up the temperature in the kiln to around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. This burns away the rest of the plastic and vitrifies the shell, turning it into a durable ceramic that I can pour molten metal into. Once all of the plastic was completely burned away, I used an air compressor to blow out any ash left in the shell, which could affect the quality of the castings. Once the metals were at the right pouring temperature, I removed the shells from the kiln, placed them inside an old crucible, and surrounded them with sand to keep them from falling over. After pouring the copper mold, I swapped out the crucibles and started to melt the silver. The furnace was still really hot, so the silver didn't take any time at all to melt. Thank you. 
Once the shells were cool enough to handle, I started breaking them apart. I was a little bit surprised to see that there's actually some shrinkage in the metal, which is caused by the metal contracting as it cools. I expected some shrinkage, but not this much. It really isn't a problem though, and it shouldn't affect how well they work. The sandblaster is the best way to remove the shell from the inside of these tubes. Without it, it would be almost impossible to remove it. I do have a metal cutting bandsaw, but I wanted a little bit more control, so I ended up cutting all these by hand, which was quite a bit of work. With that done, now I can chuck them up into my lathe and clean them up a bit. I wasn't doing any precise machining here, I just wanted to clean them up a little bit and make them look a little nicer. Now I can start cleaning up the inside and outside surfaces, and for that I used a die grinder. As a final step, I removed the marks left by the die grinder by using my new 2x42 inch belt grinder with a Scotch-Brite belt on it, and that did a really good job. Well, they're finally done, so let's see how well they work. This is a 25 millimeter N52 neodymium magnet. It's actually really strong. It doesn't look like it would be, but it is. That's a steel screwdriver, and it's really on here. It has a really strong pull force, actually. All right, let's give it a shot. <laughs> wow. That is so weird. Just floats down there. Strange. Okay, let's try this over. Oh, well, that's actually worse than the copper. It must be because it's sterling. Yep, that definitely goes through the tube, the silver tube faster than the copper. Weird. Definitely faster. Wow, I did not see that coming at all. Oh well, it was an interesting experiment. <laughs> and I made, uh, I cut them in half so that you can, can drop them through like this, one after another. There you go. Oh, it feels strange if you if you push the ball up through the tube it's like it's molasses or something that's weird yeah there's resistance going up and coming down that's strange wow oh and i can i can feel the weight of the ball as it's falling through the tube even though it's not touching the sides that's really bizarre it's as if the ball is placed on the tube. I can feel the weight of the magnet, but it's not actually touching the copper tube at all. That's strange. What else can we do? How about like this? <laughs> That's cool. It like breaks. 
bizarre. <laughs> well, this project was a lot of fun, and I really like how these things turned out. Thanks to the viewer who suggested this to me, it's too bad the silver didn't work out really, but it was a fun experiment. I'm definitely going to be reusing this silver, so if any of you have any suggestions, let me know. I'm not quite done with this project yet. I'm actually going to make another copper tube. This thing's going to be huge. And I got some great big neodymium magnets. Look at that. So I think this project's going to be a lot of fun. This magnet is massive, and this thing's going to be almost 20 pounds. Hey, if you like this video and you'd like to help me continue to make them, then consider joining my Patreon. You'll gain access to any of my 3D printing files, and I try to post multiple Patreon-only posts a week there. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.